As you head to the polls, it's quite important to understand the voting process specifically for the presidential race. The votes you and I cast aren't directly for the president. They're for electors. Tyler Paley explaining how your vote matters in the Electoral College. In a presidential election, you're not actually casting your vote for the president. On or before November 3rd, you're voting for your state's designated amount of electors. Those electors are chosen by each state's political parties. There are 538 of them in total, the same amount as there are members of Congress, plus three for Washington, D.C. They're split up by a state's population based on the U.S. Census. Ohio, for example, has 18 electoral votes. Michigan has 16. California has the most with 55. In 48 states, it's winner take all. But in Maine and Nebraska, electoral votes are actually split based on the winners of the popular vote and individual congressional districts. To win the presidency, a candidate needs at least 270 electoral votes in total. But what happens if nobody gets to 270? Well, that's when Congress gets involved. Choosing from the top three candidates in the Electoral College, the House of Representatives votes on a president. But here's the rub. Each state only gets one vote. So suddenly, Ohio, Michigan, California, and every other state have the same power. It's never happened before, but if all of that fails, the vice president becomes president and the new VP is chosen by the Senate. Ultimately, the president is inaugurated on January 20th, 2021.